or use your credit card. This is CNN. The beginning of a new life in Haiti. First there's fingerprinting, then addresses are taken. The 1992 Winter Games set to get off the ground with a bang of sorts. And in Berlin, an era long over, can it be brought back to life? Welcome to our viewers around the world. I'm Donna Kelly. And I'm Frank Sesno. Thanks for joining us. The United States continues to send back hundreds of Haitian refugees, and in Haiti, tension and fear of violence continue to mount. Today marks one year since ousted President Jean-Bertrand Aristide, Haiti's first democratically elected president, was inaugurated to office. And though major, uh, no major incidents, rather, have been reported, soldiers with machine guns are patrolling the streets of Port-au-Prince. With more now on what awaits the newly arrived refugees, Bill Neely in Haiti. It's not what they wanted. They fled Haiti in hope of a better life. They're returning now in fear of their lives. Hundreds every day, forced back by the U.S. into the lap of a regime with blood on its hands. A regime they fear will now punish them for their disloyalty. I think my life's in danger, he says. I think I'll be shot. They're fingerprinted when they arrive. The authorities say it's routine. Armed police circle the crowd as names and addresses are taken. The Red Cross gives them money for food, and from here on, they're on their own. They fled a military coup. They're returning to a country whose troops this week celebrated their grip on power. The general who overthrew Haiti's first freely elected president has tried to ensure that dissent is crushed. At least 1,500 have been killed. The poorest areas are targeted. It's from here that hundreds of the refugees fled in terror. And they're returning to a bankrupt country. Haiti has for long been the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Since the coup, things have got steadily worse. A U.S.-led trade embargo has succeeded in hitting the ordinary people who live in this squalor, but has completely failed to get rid of the government. Forced to return to all of this by the U.S., Augustine Louis. Like the others, afraid he'll be seen as a traitor and shot. If anything happens to me here, he says, it's the fault of the Americans. We took him back to his home village yesterday, to the family he'd left four months ago, who never knew if he was alive or dead. A carpenter, he'd sold everything he had, left his children and risked his life to sail to America. He told the story of the boat and the refugee camp to his friends, but in the end he couldn't explain to them why America had sent him back. In villages across Haiti, they're waiting for news of the thousands who fled. Many drowned. Abnes Ernest left months ago. His sister believes if he's not dead already, he'll be killed when he returns. His father wants to leave himself. Like so many, hunger is his reason. They sang to God in this village, we're waiting for you to deliver us. Haitians today are fearful, confused, and now bitter that America appears to have turned its back on their crushed democracy. But as fast as the U.S. sends back the refugees, hundreds of others prepare to flee. Bill Neely, ITN, Haiti. In Algeria, the crack of gunfire and a crackdown on Muslim fundamentalists. Security forces used bullets and tear gas to scatter crowds that gathered after weekly prayers. Witnesses say several people were hurt in classes in the capital. Muslim fundamentalists accuse the security forces of killing more than 20 people since Tuesday. Algiers Radio puts the number at 12. The military-backed government has banned any political activity in the nation's mosques. A Muslim fundamentalist party was heading for control of parliament before the new government took power last month. 
Dozens of people died under new avalanches today in Turkey, in a region where more than 100 people have been killed by snowslides since last week. Turkey's southeastern provinces have been buried under heavy snowfall. Roads are blocked, making it impossible for rescue workers to get through in some places. The governor of one province says people are clawing at snow with shovels in search of survivors. At least 20 people are believed dead after a scaffolding collapsed at a construction site in Thailand. The steel structure was overloaded with workers leaving for the day when it pulled away from a luxury high-rise apartment building in downtown Bangkok. The building is in a compound where many international ambassadors live. Rescue workers say the death toll could rise as they search through the rubble. Rescue workers in Evansville, Indiana, meanwhile, continue pulling bodies from the wreckage of a restaurant and a hotel. Sixteen people were killed when a military transport plane crashed into the buildings and exploded into flames just before lunch hour yesterday. The C-130 was on a training mission. Officials are still trying to determine why it crashed. All five of the plane's crewmen, uh, crew members rather, died, as did two people in the restaurant and nine in the hotel. Some of the stories still ahead for you. Boris Yeltsin leaves behind old animosities in France, but finds new ones at home. A new magazine in Britain takes an oldie spin. And unusual training exercises for the Winter Olympics. These are not athletes going for the gold, but they're French security forces. I like a really big, round burger. And I like them really, really thick. You're gonna have a baseball. Smells come up and the juices drip down. I can almost hear it. By the sound, just by the sound, then I know it's ready. Whoa. Wait. It's not done. Done. Now it's done. Oh, it's done. A1. It's how burgers are. Perfect. Done. It's there in the way an officer smiles. In the way a steward remembers your name. A kindness that comes easily. A genuine warmth. Service that is truly a step above. Come, and for a week or so, allow yourself to be absolutely spoiled by the people of Holland, America, who've made us the best cruise line in the world. In Switzerland, Ricola has been soothing sore throats and relieving coughs naturally for over 60 years. Yahoo! Ricola is a blend of 10 organically grown alpine herbs and natural flavors, providing pleasant tasting natural relief. Ricola, the natural choice for soothing sore throats and relieving coughs naturally. The Murine Earwax Removal System has drops that safely loosen hardened wax when used as directed, plus an ear washer to gently flush wax away. Murine, the complete medically approved system to safely remove earwax. Good morning. Are you tired of morning news shows that give you everything but the news? Big events happening overseas, but first... Is your pet psychic? We'll find out. Wake up to headline news for the latest news, business, and sports around the clock. Russian President Boris Yeltsin ends a triumphant visit to France on a high note, but he returns to trouble in the Crimea. Last evening, the Ukrainian parliament resolved that the Crimean Peninsula is its territory and that Russia must back off claims to the contrary. The hard line is bad news for Mr. Yeltsin, who's had better luck in negotiations with the French. CNN's Christiane Amanpour with our report. Boris Yeltsin wrapped up his three-day state visit to France by signing a cooperation treaty covering cultural and economic affairs. It's the first Russia has signed with a major power since the breakup of the Soviet Union. Top of Yeltsin's wish list here, help for his radical reforms, and he got it. Unis par des objectifs comparables. We are united by common objectives. Our relationship is friendly and no longer competitive. We're going to help the Russian economy get on its feet. To that end, France has pledged an initial sum of $650 million in loans and credits with the promise of another half billion to come. Before we came here, we had many questions about France's commitment. But now we've been given a great deal of help. And for that, I thank the French president. The West, despite its promises, has been slow to deliver the aid Russia needs, and the private sector is reluctant to risk investing in Russia's shaky economic system. 
On the issue of nuclear disarmament, Yeltsin again promised to have all the former Soviet Union's nuclear warheads on Russian soil within the next few months, and he repeated his goal of cutting strategic nuclear arms. But Yeltsin backed off trying to get the French to reduce their weapons. He now says he fully understands that France won't even consider cutting back until there are much larger reductions in the U.S. and former Soviet nuclear arsenals. Christiana Wanpour, CNN, Paris. On Monday, Western countries will begin an airlift of food and medicine to the former Soviet Union. The first of the flights leaves Frankfurt after a diplomatic ceremony there. To make sure supplies reach the needy, U.S. officials now inside the Commonwealth of Independent States will help with distribution. Meanwhile, former Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev says he's keeping a close eye on Russian President Boris Yeltsin to make sure Yeltsin continues on the path of reform. In an interview with Russian television, one of his first in stepping down as the Soviet leader, Gorbachev says he's made his position clear. When we sat with him after Alma Ata one day around 9 o'clock in the evening discussing how we should act, I said, Boris Nikolaevich, I won't just support, but I will also defend you as long as you continue to go on with the course of the reform. If it's otherwise, if the Russian government goes a different path, then I'll have to reconsider my position. Gorbachev quit as president of the Soviet Union as the Soviet Union collapsed. Polish President Lech Wałęsa says the West should help the new Commonwealth countries restructure their industries rather than flooding them with food and supplies. In an interview in Warsaw, Wałęsa said if the West offers only goods to the former Soviet republics, their industries will die and huge unemployment, his words, will result. French Prime Minister Edith Cresson rejects calls for early elections despite the scandal raised by the visit of Palestinian leader George Habash. Cresson told Parliament she'll remain in power at least until next year's elections. Habash, head of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, flew to Paris late last month for medical treatment. Three days later, he returned to Tunisia after police briefly placed him under house arrest. The ensuing scandal has already forced the resignation of five members of the Mitterrand government and the head of the French Red Cross. And the dream of a united Europe is closer to becoming reality. European community nations just signed an agreement aimed at drawing them into a unified political, economic, and monetary bloc. Parliaments of the 12 member nations must ratify the accord, which is to take effect January 1st of 1993. Panama's president says he's uncovered a plot to have him killed. President Guillermo Andara authorized the roundup of a number of suspects. Chief among them is former Colonel Eduardo Herrera. Herrera was taken away by Panamanian police last evening. He says he knows nothing of an assassination plot. Panamanian newspapers say 10 to 20 policemen and military acquaintances of deposed Panamanian leader Manuel Noriega were also detained. And Mr. Andara was installed as president after the 1989 U.S. invasion of Panama. He strikes fear in the hearts of his prey. Every person who comes here get his fanaticism into his personality. He is a fanatic, and we all become fanatics for the Serbian people. When we return on the International Hour, we'll introduce you to the renegade Serbian leader known as the Siberian Tiger. Get ready, basketball fans. It's coming right at you. Showtime! Your chance to get every magic moment all on one incredible video. Magic Johnson, always showtime. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the nation's number one sports weekly. Your free video is a dazzling look at the fabulous career of Irvin Magic Johnson. He digs down deep into his bag of tricks to take you on a victory ride you won't forget. Straight down the middle. Still going. Still going. Oh! You'll cheer every exciting minute as you follow this leader up and down the court, wherever he goes, from high school to college to the pros. He just keeps on winning with an enthusiasm, a spirit, and style that would change the NBA. Call this toll-free number now to be sure you get in on all the excitement free. Two seconds, and it's 18-footer, wins it! Don't miss the rookie's first NBA championship as he rises above the crowd to stun the Sixers. And you'll be there for all the battles with the legendary Larry Bird, the rivalry that started in college and continued in the NBA. You'll feel the intensity, the frustration, and the excitement as the two fight for the last shot, the one that makes champion. Didn't shoot in five seconds left. And he got middle, just what I thought. A hook shot at 12. Yeah! Matt is just a great basketball player. He's the best I've ever seen.
Get 60 minutes of memorable magic, free from Sports Illustrated. Get your free video and 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the Olympic preview and the famous swimsuit issue, for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. You may use your credit card. Follow all your favorites in Sports Illustrated. Call now to subscribe or renew and get this memorable video free. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. The magic of Urban Johnson will always be something special, something we can't forget. Treasure it always. And every week, enjoy the continuing drama and emotion of sports in Sports Illustrated. No, more like a blood feud than a war, the brutal conflict in Yugoslavia is driven by ethnic hatred. Nobody knows that better than the Tigers, a band of Serbian irregulars. Their reputation for ferocity is as well known as their mascots, their si the Siberian Tiger. Correspondent Jackie Shemansky reports. The Tigers are on patrol in Erdut. The military unit prowls the streets during training. But only a local resident is on hand for the display of military might. A renegade personality leads the pack, Arkan Jeliko Razniatovich, a businessman and father during peacetime, a fighter of legendary renown during war. His Serbian irregulars earn the feline nickname from their fierceness in battle and a Siberian mascot. We are, we are attackers. We are commando attackers and uh, we do our job properly. It's not easy to be one of Arkan's men. He personally oversees training that gives new meaning to the term boot camp. Ideological training supplements war games. Each man is instilled with Arkan's rabid belief in the Serbian cause to fight Croatian fascists, a leftover from World War II. They fought uh, with the uh, Nazi army, with the Adolf Hitler army, uh, shoulder to shoulder, and uh, they are still thinking as Nazi. Th they have na Nazi thinking. Arkan commands respect from his men based on fear and his prowess as a hunter. He is referred to as Papa. He helps us. Every person who comes here gets his fanaticism into his personality. He is a fanatic and we all become fanatics for the Serbian people. Recruiting is not a problem. Volunteers come from as far away as the United States to join. My wife, she called me crazy. I was going to wash my clothes in laundromat. And I called my wife from Belka. She did not left. Arkan has achieved folk hero status in Serbia and a nasty reputation on the other side of the war. Croatian officials are rumored to have placed a bounty on his head. He shrugs off the notoriety, but is constantly trailed by armed guards. The Tigers continue training in spite of a lasting ceasefire. Arkan predicts Serbia's war with Croatia is far from over. He supports the UN peace plan, but wants to be ready, just in case. Jackie Szymanski for CNN, Erdut. The Central Intelligence Agency confirmed CIA Director Robert Gates is in the Middle East for meetings with his counterparts. CIA officials say the trip has been planned for some time and did not come at the request of the White House, as some news organizations have reported. Bush administration sources say Gates' trip includes stops in Egypt, Israel, and Saudi Arabia. Those sources also say Gates is reviewing the situation in Iraq amid indications of growing unrest in Iraqi President Saddam Hussein's inner circle. Nearly a year after the Gulf War, Saddam Hussein remains in power, though he leads a much weaker Iraq. And Iraq continues to claim victory in its battle with the U.S.-led Allied forces. CNN's Stefan Katsonis reports from Baghdad. It's been a piece of poverty and setbacks, of civil war in the South and North. It's been a victory, the government says, just by standing up to a huge international army. But it came at a very heavy price. Officials tour the country, inspecting the damage that remains. They say 90% of the bridges are rebuilt, but some of the most important ones are still down. In Nasiriya, people use the pontoon bridge to go across town, while the work continues. The emphasis lately is on the recovery. The whistle stops are mostly to inaugurate repaired grain elevators and rebuilt warehouses to put a good face on the hardship. It's more or less the same picture back in Baghdad. 
The idea here is to try to get things back to normal. But there are signs of the war tucked away in the corner of the eye, even at the football game. Veterans of last year's war have joined those who fought against Iran, taking front row seats to watch other men run around. It's been about five months since they were lifted from their hospital beds into wheelchairs. Most of these men were crippled by shrapnel from the Allied bombing. And this one says the embargo has hurt him just as much. I have a message for Bush. You launched a war against us, in which I was handicapped, and so I lost my youth. You must release the grip of the embargo, as we need medicine to help me walk. In fact, the embargo allows medicine and food, but for some reason, orders of medical supplies are still slow in coming to Iraq. <coughs> the National Orchestra of Iraq gathered recently to honor the victory and the reconstruction. It performed patriotic songs for ministers, celebrities, and other patriots. The Minister of Information and Culture told the assembled that art is the weapon of the honest man. And he quoted Saddam Hussein, saying any nation without great artists and poets cannot have great politicians. Some stood up in the audience to perform She'er Shabi, a kind of make-it-up-as-you-go-along folk poetry, in praise of the president, and in defiance of the Western nations who tried to crush Iraqi pride. Out in the streets, people are really just celebrating the fact that they've survived. There's a lot of thinking going on. They wonder when will the embargo end, or if there will be any more rebellions in the south, and whether the Allies really are planning to attack again. During the Second World War, this sign meant V for victory. In the 60s, it stood for peace. But there's been precious little of either here for a very long time now. So one wonders what meaning the sign could possibly have for Iraqis in the future. Stefan Kotsonis, CNN, Baghdad. And now updating you on a story we've been following for the past few days here on the International Hour. In Jerusalem, police released a report saying a heart, uh, heart failure caused the death of a Palestinian prisoner in the West Bank. But a U.S. coroner who took part in the autopsy alleges that Mustafa, Mustafa Kawai's treatment during interrogation played a part in his death. The coroner, who was requested by Akawi's family, says Akawi had marks on his chest and ankles. Akawi was arrested in East Jerusalem last month. He died this week, just hours after telling a court that he'd been tortured during questioning in prison. Israeli authorities have launched an inquiry into Akawi's death. Still to come on the International Hour. We're just saying it's okay to be old. You could call it hip replacement. You know, it's putting the hip back into old. A British magazine hopes to find gold in old as it takes a lighter approach to life after 50. Hello, Linus. <coughs> I see your blanket's out for washing. I feel so insecure. Security is why over 45 million people trust MetLife to ensure their lives and health and help plan their retirement. Does MetLife give up blankets? No, but the world-famous MetLife representative is the very symbol of security in an uncertain world. You're right. I feel better already. Get Met. It pays. They say diversify to reduce risk, but I'm no financial expert. I know how to build a house, not a portfolio. How do you judge each investment? When to buy or sell? And who has time to follow the market? Because most people can't be masters at everything, Fidelity Investments created the Fidelity Asset Manager. In one easy mutual fund, it seeks to diversify among and across stocks, bonds, and money markets. And Fidelity professionals carefully watch your investment for you, gradually adjusting your assets to keep pace with changes in the market. It's designed for those of us who aren't financial experts. Call now for this free fact kit on the Fidelity Asset Manager. I called. You should, too. There's no pressure to invest. There's no sales charge, either. All your money works for you. Diversification made simple. Call 1-800-356-8100 for your free fact kit. Fidelity Investments. Common sense, uncommon results. Share price yield and return will vary. Today, important in the past, not as important to this year's campaign. So what will the Iowa caucuses mean in the race for the White House? A preview of the polls on Inside Politics 92, today at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on CNN.
There's a new magazine coming out in Britain that's not exactly aimed at the youth culture. It will be called The Oldie. But just to keep in touch with popular culture, the magazine will include interviews with rock stars. But of course, the rock stars, like the readers, are getting up in years. Anya Sitaram reports. It looks suspiciously like a joke, but Richard Ingram's with private eye fame means business. He's launching the Oldie magazine in two weeks' time to what he believes is an untapped market. I think an oldie is someone who feels a bit out of place in the world of today. And there are quite a lot of young people like that. I think it's someone, for example, who doesn't um, know how to work a video. That's one of my definitions of an oldie. Nannies for oldies. It's going to be terribly funny, I hope. Humour will play a big part in the magazine, but it'll have its serious side too. There'll be reviews, opinion pieces and general features. Heavy metal may be a subject for derision, but that won't exclude interviews with ageing rock stars. This sort of magazine in America would be taking itself extremely seriously, and it would all be full of, you know, how to get new boobs and facelifts and how to pretend you're young and have injections to make you... But in fact, we're not taking that line at all. We're, take, we're being very light-hearted about it, hopefully even funny. And um, we're just saying it's okay to be old. You could call it hip replacement. You know, it's putting the hip back into old. At £1.40 an issue, they've got to sell 50,000 copies a fortnight to break even. But with 18 million people in Britain over 50, a leading advertising agency says there's a potentially lucrative market. I think they'll pick up um, enough subscribers, enough purchases of the magazine to, um, to make, make good in terms of the cover price. I think they'll I think they have a hard job in advertising because... Uh, we're an industry that's sort of bogged down in sort of youth culture, uh, and I think that part of it will be difficult. Do you think it's going to be a success? Well, uh, I, I would hate to predict. I regard it as an enormous gamble, and uh, sometimes I think I'm completely bonkers. Up next on CNN World Report, one of the Middle East's most precious resources, water, takes on added importance in the search for peace. One. Only one gum passes the test when you've got dental work, and that's Freedent. Freedent won't stick to your dental work, so you can be confident chewing it. And because it also moistens your mouth and freshens your breath, Freedent's in a class by itself. Freedent's the one that took the stick out of gum, and Freedent moistens your mouth. Yeah, moistens your mouth and freshens your breath while you chew. Non-stick Freedent moistens your mouth and freshens your breath. YoPlay, low fat, calcium rich, with active yogurt cultures. It's something 40-year-old Vicky Gentry does every day. Smooth, creamy YoPlay. Do it for you. There's constipation, and there's constipation. Oh, yeah. When it's this bad, take it to the max. New Maximum Relief Formula X-Lax Pills with 50% more X-Lax Medicine. For maximum relief, oh, yeah. take it to the max. International Hour continues, followed by Early Prime after this local commercial break, next on CNN. Sunday on CNN World Report, a country once flooded with trash and toxic residues. Can Argentina put a stop to collecting its neighbor's waste? Then, Nigeria, considered by many nomad's land. This group finds the open road its home, getting an inside look at the Fulani nomads. And in Canada, it's survival of the fastest. Why car racing is much more than just a Sunday drive on CNN World Report, 3 p.m. Eastern Sunday. To unlock your body's potential, we proudly offer Soloflex. 32 old-fashioned iron pumping exercises, each correct in form and balance, all on a simple machine that sits in the corner of your home. For a free brochure, call anytime. This is CNN. Close to calling it a day and calling it a week for that matter at the New York Stock Exchange. We'll check in for the latest financial news with Jan Hopkins. Jan? 
Thanks, Donna. Stocks are stabilizing at sharply lower levels in the final half hour of trading here on Wall Street. Investors bailing out after the Federal Reserve knocks down hopes of lower interest rates today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average reversing an early 14-point rally. Right now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down about 20 points at 32, 35.91. Dow had been down as many as 47 points earlier this afternoon. Volume very heavy again today, 213 million shares changing hands. Declining issues beating out advancing issues by a 9 to 4 margin. On the broader and secondary markets, the NASDAQ index of over-the-counter stocks and the American Stock Exchange index are coming off yesterday's record closes. Investors thought that the Federal Reserve was going to ease after the release of a troubling unemployment report today. U.S. businesses eliminating 91,000 jobs last month, most of those cuts in retailing and manufacturing. But the nation's unemployment rate held steady at 7.1 percent, remaining at the highest rate in nearly six years. The pressure may now be on Congress to take action to revive the economy. Elected officials on both sides of the aisle may now feel that they've got to up the ante in terms of the level of fiscal stimulus that must be provided to the economy to register some forward momentum. The dollar falling sharply on the unemployment report. It's down one and three quarters pennies against the German mark, two cents against the British pound, a third of a yen against the Japanese currency. Major layoffs by two of Britain's largest car makers, Ford Motor, cutting 2,100 jobs in Britain. Ford says it's reducing its workforce in the face of growing Japanese competition in England. And Bohol, the British division of General Motors, says that it's cutting 300 out of 750 jobs. It will replace workers with robots. On the continent, German car maker BMW is eliminating 3,000 jobs by the end of the year. BMW says it's cutting costs to remain competitive. Yesterday, Mercedes-Benz announced it's also cutting its workforce. That's the latest in business news. We'll have another report in one hour. One final check to the Dow before we go shows that it is now down 18 points. I'm Jan Hopkins, reporting live from the New York Stock Exchange. Thanks, Jan. No loan guarantees for Israel without a promise to forego further settlement activity in the occupied territories. That's the deal Secretary of State James Baker laid out earlier today during an appearance before a congressional committee. Baker, at this hour, is meeting with Israeli Ambassador Zalman Shoval to discuss the terms for granting the long-sought request. Israel wants the loan guarantees so it can borrow up to $10 billion to resettle Soviet Jews pouring into Israel. A key sticking point, settlements in the occupied territories, which the U.S. says violates long-standing policy. But one pro-Israel group says the issue is more complex than that. How can you stop road building? How can you stop the building of schools which will serve Arabs as well as Jews and say that those amounts will be deducted from the loan guarantees or will be a violation of the understanding? This is a, this is a very complex issue. There are many factors which have yet to be discussed and I think we're only at the beginning stages of these negotiations that will have to be worked out between the two countries um, over the coming weeks. The Bush administration has said it views Jewish settlements in the Gaza and West Bank as obstacles to Middle East peace. Turning a profit is all in a day's work for Western capitalists, but it's a revolutionary idea in most of communist China. Capitalist-style reforms are growing in the southern part of China, but one of the biggest threats to change may be the U.S. Congress. CNN's Mike Chinoy has our report. The market-oriented reforms of recent years have made the southern Chinese province of Guangdong, with its 60 million people, the most tolerant and open in China, an environment which, by its mere existence, poses a threat to the Marxist hardliners in Beijing. In Guangdong, you have greater freedom of information, greater freedom of movement, greater labor mobility, all of these things. Since the Tiananmen Square crackdown, the ideologues have sought to keep Guangdong in line. But there's so much wealth being generated here, not only for the province, but for the coffers of the central government, that the authorities have had little choice but to tolerate Guangdong's capitalist ways, although insisting that everybody call it socialism. We are using the stock market for socialist construction. There's still a chance the hardliners could derail Guangdong's economic progress. But a few days ago, reclusive elder statesman Deng Xiaoping made a public visit to the province in what is widely viewed as a renewed high-level endorsement for market-style reforms. 
And so, with the ideologues at bay for now, the greatest danger to continuing liberalization comes, ironically, from the U.S. Congress in the form of threats to revoke China's most favored nation trading status. To cut off MFN and to cut off the American intercourse with China commercially is to remove one of the catalysts for change in China. If you take MFN away, uh, the enterprises that will be hurt are precisely those enterprises which are the backbone of, of reform. For the Hong Kong-based Cotter Toy Company and the thousands of Chinese workers it employs making dolls for the American market, withdrawal of MFN would be a disaster. The jobs here will, uh, will be reduced and the living standard will be reduced. Then the, all the hard working contributed by the Americans and other liberal countries towards improving the, uh, the, the, the democracy in China uh, has been good. There's more than a little irony in this situation. It was contact with the West that helped trigger the capitalist-style reforms that have transformed this part of China and challenged the ideologues in Beijing. Now, if the U.S. revokes most favored nation status, the reformers here are likely to lose much of that contact with the outside world and risk seeing the entire process of reform grind to a halt. Mike Chinoy, CNN, Dongguan, China. And when we come back, Berlin and a silver screen that has lost its luster. the movies be without cable. A monthly subscription to basic cable gives you over 600 movies for less than it costs a family of four to go to the movies once. Cable contributes to life. With five powerful cleaning agents, Fantastic not only outcleans all others on greasy kitchen dirt, it's the perfect do-it-yourself cleaning kit for almost every surface in your kitchen and bath. Five Cleaner Fantastic. More power, more places. Coming up in just about 22 minutes from now, Early Prime with Lou Waters. And Lou's here with a look ahead, Lou. Right, Frank, ahead for our U.S. viewers. Medical fraud, a pot of gold for some that's draining the U.S. economy. And the Justice Department's out to stop it. We'll take you to a very neighborly neighborhood in California that's putting a new twist on an old concept, communal housing. And we'll have an update on Helen Hayes, First Lady of American Theater, who's hospitalized in New York. Cheryl Atkinson joins me at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern for Early Prime. Join us then. Now back to Donna. Lou, thanks. Uh, the 1992 Winter Olympics are less than a day away. <laughs> Musicians in Albertville, France, are busily practicing for the opening ceremonies. Athletes and officials from 64 nations will take part in the event to be held inside a specially built Olympic stadium in the city. Security will be tight for the opening ceremony. Several hundred guards will monitor the two-hour event. In all, 8,200 security personnel will watch over the games. They're trained to handle everything from terrorists to avalanches. Well, back in the 1920s, when Hollywood was getting its start in the United States, an equally impressive film studio was headquartered in Potsdam, Germany. The studio witnessed World War II and the partition of Germany, and as CNN's Doug James reports, it may be about to witness a rebirth. Back in the 1920s and 30s, this was Europe's Hollywood, the place where Fritz Lang filmed Metropolis, where Greta Garbo got her start where Marlena Dietrich found stardom. Now, 80 years after the gates of Babelsberg first opened, the studio is at a crossroads, desperately searching for new investors who will keep it open. At first glance, this sprawling, run-down shell of a building seems no different than any other obsolete East German factory. 
But unlike so many other industries here, many believe this factory could have a future. We could become the leading media center in all of Europe. We could accommodate anyone who wants to produce anything, movies or TV films. In addition to its production facilities, Babelsberg has a costume department with 150,000 outfits and the world's biggest collection of cinema props. It's now all in the hands of the Troyhant, the government holding company responsible for privatizing assets once held by communist East Germany. We are talking here not of machinery, we are talking of privatizing culture. Hundreds of small companies have expressed an interest in moving to the 100-acre site, and one French media giant says it's prepared to invest a billion dollars or more to develop a multimedia city with movie and TV studios, a business center, and a hotel. A decision on the future of Babelsberg is expected this spring. In the meantime, the studio is surviving by doing what it does best, for an audience of tourists who come to see how movies are made. For them, the magic of Babelsberg lives on, even if there is no film in the camera. Doug James, CNN, Potsdam. And up next on CNN World Report, Romania's drive toward democracy get its, gets its first field test in Sunday's elections. We'll have a look at what's at stake. Do you really matter? Does your long-distance company think so? Does it take longer to reach a real person? AT&T has more people to help you than all other long-distance companies combined. 24 hours a day, you'll get treated like you count. Just one call to 1-800-528-6555 switches you back free. Whatever happened to those big savings? What does big mean, anyway? Wouldn't you like a savings plan that fits the way you call? AT&T gives you more ways to save than anyone else. In fact, we'll personalize a plan to give you low prices no matter how you call. Is it a hassle paying two phone bills each month? Do you wish you could just get one again? With AT&T, you get one simple bill a month, not two. Call now, 1-800-528-6555. Is it harder to find a phone booth that likes your long distance calling card? Are there too many numbers to punch? Is life too short for that? Is it time to come back to AT&T? Get back the AT&T calling card that works for more public phones without requiring access codes. Yeah! Is your savings plan confusing? Do you have to take time out to deal with it? Are there too many rules? The AT&T Any Hour Saver plan is easy. You get low prices when you call anyone, anywhere, anytime. Do calls take longer to go through? Are there countries your calling plan just doesn't cover? Are there countries you can't reach at all? Are there times you miss AT&T? Call 1-800-528-6555 and come back for free to the company you can count on to make you feel like you count. AT&T, you couldn't pick a better time to come back. time now for the CNN World Report segment where we bring you news as reported from the perspective of broadcasters around the globe. Romania's fragile democracy will be given a major test on Sunday. The country will have its first free vote for mayors and councillors in more than half a century. Analysts believe the local polls will provide clues on the outcome of this year's general elections. We have this report now from Romanian television. The local elections are going to operate a basic change in Romanian society. Appointed mayors and councillors are going to be replaced by elected ones, mapping out a new democratic structure. 84 parties have presented more than 12,000 candidates for less than 3,000 mayor offices throughout the country. There are 35 runners for the mayor of Bucharest only. During the campaign, fears rose that a lot of voters might not show up, but a national poll released 60 hours before the opening of the polling stations showed that about 85% of the adults with voting rights are ready to cast their ballots. The local elections are the first of their kind in several decades. They represent a crucial moment in the strife of Romania towards building a free society based on democratic principles. 
There were difficulties in preparing them, most of the opposition parties criticizing the provisions of the electoral law which requires students to vote in their area where they come from and not in the town of their university. The large number of parties running in the electoral campaign will produce a very diverse structure for local administration which is quite likely to generate a strange if not difficult relationship between the mayors and councillors and the future government. International observers from 14 countries sponsored by the American International Republican Institute are monitoring the way that voting is performed. They arrived some days in advance, met the officials of the National Committee for the Local Elections and studied the provisions of the laws which provide their framework. The voting itself is just a dress rehearsal both for the parties and for the electorate having in view the future elections for the parliament and for the president of the country in late May or early June. For CNN World Report, this is Nikolai Melinescu from Romanian Television. Democratic movements have changed the social and economic face of Eastern Europe, but in the coming years, outside investors will play a crucial role in the future of the region. In Bulgaria, for instance, the government has passed a law making it easier for international investors to negotiate business deals with Bulgarian companies. Our report provided by Bulgarian Television. Storefronts and windows in Sofia are nothing like what they were a year or two ago. Gone is much of the drab gray uniformity. There are goods on the shelves and you can get value for your money if you look around. Changes are not only cosmetic now that the parliament has finally passed the law on businesses and protection of foreign investments. Foreigners are given full freedom to invest in Bulgaria, rules being very liberal. Special licenses issued by the Council of Ministers are only needed if national security is considered jeopardized. Prospective investors can acquire real estate, housing and industrial buildings lifelong, though the Constitution bars them from land ownership. There is legal protection and guarantees for acquired property, expropriation being possible only if state interests make it imperative and on orders by the finance minister. Shares, stocks, bonds and securities are made accessible to buyers from abroad. State interference in investment operations has been reduced to the minimum. Well, I think that uh, the law is, uh, is rather good and as far as uh, we are concerned, we are ready to start investing in Bulgaria in different fields. So, uh, first aim is to invest in uh, some services and our big aim is to invest in the production of uh, uh, biological uh, products of the agriculture. Because in Bulgaria we believe uh, there are approximately 6,000 uh, uh, square kilometers of uh, biological uh, clean land. The law allows foreign investors to open deposits in the local currency. They can convert interest in any currency and transfer the sums to accounts in banks anywhere else. Taking from any type of activity can also be transferred out of the country. Combined with Bulgaria's resources, Western-style entrepreneurship can help ensure the country's prosperity. Bulgaria and the former Soviet republics are where Western businessmen invest lead. The new law is designed to invite major investments rather than giving the economy a temporary injection which would soon wear off. Ilyana Sherkova, Bulgarian Television, for the CNN World Report. And when CNN World Report returns, these Welsh fishermen say their way of life and long-standing traditions are at stake. We'll tell you why. First, let's check tomorrow's forecast temperatures for selected cities around the globe. Get some coffee? No. This gives me a chance to call my broker. Now? Sure. <laughs> my broker's never in this early. You have to keep to his schedule? Trading decisions happen round the clock. That's why so many active investors choose Fidelity Brokerage Services. 
Fidelity has experienced brokers available 24 hours a day to place your trades. Plus, you'll save as much as 76% on stock and option commissions. Call this number now for your free Fidelity brokerage fact kit. That's right, 500 shares at the market price at the open. Great. A couple more things I want to cover. And find out about Fidelity's fast on-time performance nationwide with significant savings. For your free fact kit, call Fidelity Brokerage Services at 1-800-624-4900. A Fidelity Investments Company. At the Ashby Inn, the secret of our chicken rice recipe is in the rich taste of our chicken stock. Country Inn rice dishes made with hearty country ingredients in Uncle Ben's rice. Taste the country in Uncle Ben's Country Inn. Rice dishes inspired by the finest inns. Flu epidemic declared. Entire U.S. affected. What will you do? Doctors recommend Theraflu. Hot liquid medicine that works fast. Theraflu. Strong therapy for flu symptoms. On CNN Today, one of the last giant luxury liners retires, remembering the SS United States on Early Prime. Then on Showbiz Today, why are many big-time film stars taking time out on Broadway? All today on CNN. In the Middle East, arguments rage over almost every natural resource, oil, water, and land. Jordan, Egypt, and ten other Arab states took part in multilateral peace talks in Moscow recently, where water was one topic of discussion. Despite this week's flooding of the Jordan River, the region still faces a long-term water shortage. We get our report from Jordan Television. Jordan is facing severe water shortage due to climatic changes. It not only has no independent access to water, but also no control over it. We need about 500 million cubic meters a year. What we are getting today is only less than 250 million cubic meters a year. Jordan largely depends on rainfall to meet its water requirements. Several dams have been constructed to harvest the rainfall and increase its water reserves. All the water that we have behind our dams will not be enough for one year to irrigate the land we are obligated to irrigate. The agriculture sector consumes nearly 73% of the total water consumption. The amount of water that is available for agricultural use is not sufficient to produce what we need in terms of food. Industry consumes 4% of the total water consumption. The per capita water consumption is about 236 cubic meters annually. Jordan is over pumping its safe yield for underground water by 70%. Most of our underground water aquifers have been depleted. Yet, we have to keep going and supplying water at the same time. This year, the country enjoyed a good rainfall season. This year has been good, and I think we will have a good season. And I think our dams will be filled. This will give us to have better management on our water, especially the stored water behind dams, and uh, to use better water from the springs as well. Water has become a regional issue, one of the five issues to be discussed in the multilateral regional peace talks. Water is a primary issue in the region because of its aridity. Uh, there would be uh, several uh, options that Jordan will put at the table for talks and negotiations in an attempt to uh, relieve the water stress and to make available additional water stocks. If water sources continue to run low and consumption continues to rise, not only will Jordan's agriculture and industry be severely affected, but the environment as a whole will suffer. Therefore, we must hope for a regional solution to the water problem. For CNN World Report, this is Mashai, Jordan Television. Coracles are tiny, primitive fishing boats that have been used for centuries in Wales. Coracle fishermen who ply their trade on one particular Welsh river say their very existence is now threatened by unfair taxes. What else? The BBC picks up the story. It's in little tubs like these that Welshmen have fished for salmon and sea trout since long before the Romans occupied Britain. At the turn of the century, there were 800 coracles on the three southwest Wales salmon rivers. Cockle shell craft made of pitch-coated calico over a framework of willow. Now there are just 25 working in pairs with a net stretched between. But the 12 coracle fishermen of the river Towie 
experts say they may soon be forced to end a long and colourful tradition by licence fees more than double those charged on the neighbouring rivers, the Tarve and the Tybee. The Tawi men are running a campaign to keep what they see as a heritage. They're right on the river, handed down from father to son over hundreds of years. What you're finding is that the older families, the older men, the retired men, can't afford the licence fees. We're losing their tradition, but more importantly, we're losing their knowledge. The young people are not being trained, and it's going to die a natural death. And we've preached this and preached it, but they just don't listen. The Rivers Authority says that, in principle, it would welcome a preservation order protecting these, the last coracles, anywhere in the world. But it says the River Tawi's higher license fees are pegged to bigger catches of salmon and sea trout, and to its own costs in managing the rivers. The Tawi coracle fishermen say that unless Welsh Secretary David Hunt now intervenes, they may have to hang up their nets for the last time. Well, it's sufficient for me to want to go back and have a meeting with my officials about it, but I don't think I ought to say anything in advance of that, except that I've listened very carefully to what they have to say. In the early 1980s, the licence fee was no more than £30, but it doubled at a stroke. Now the Tawi men say they're in danger of being priced off the river, and that a precious piece of Wales's unique history is in danger of being lost forever. That report from the BBC. Be sure to watch our Sunday program at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for a full global newscast. This week... A 16-year-old from Finland dazzles the ski-jumping world even before the Winter Games in Albertville begin. El Salvador begins to heal the wounds and rebuild after the Civil War as those who fled the fighting start returning home. And we visit a four centuries old fort in Panama. That and more news as reported by the world's broadcasters on CNN World Report this Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2000 GMT. And that's all for the CNN World Report this day and the International Hour as well. For Donna Kelly in Atlanta, I'm Frank Sesno in Washington. Thanks for joining us. And now with a look at what's ahead on Early Prime, here's Lou Waters. Lou. Right, Frank. Coming up, President Bush visits poor children at a clinic in California. He also pitches his plan to help the poor pay for health care. We'll take a closer look at all of that. Magic Johnson prepares to lace on the high tops for real again. A look ahead to his momentary return to pro basketball. And a film studio in suburban Berlin that doesn't have any film. Some people there want to bring the city back to its days as the Hollywood of Europe. Join Cheryl Atkinson and me for Early Prime next here on CNN. Coming up, Early Prime, followed by Inside Politics 92, after a word from your local cable systems here on CNN. If you'd like to give a special gift to a boy or girl eight years old and up,